The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and you have weekly jobless claims. You could say coming in slightly less than expected, but the market seems like it was prepared for some pretty dire news as you get a little bit of a pop to the upside right now. You get the S&Ps up by 42 points. That's eight tenths percent in the positive. You see the acceleration there on that 830 bar trading from about 52.30 to 52.70. And yeah, so we get a positive market to lift things off. NASDAQ 100, we're up by 1.1% right now. You get the Dow up by about four tenths percent, 150 points in the positive, and the Russell positive by 1% as well. Bitcoin, $3,100. How about it? Quite a run from yesterday. Bitcoin up to 58,000 now from 49,000 early Monday. Crude up about 12 pennies. We're trading at 75.37, right where you were basically yesterday afternoon for that crude contract. You got gold this morning up by $14, trading at 24.46 on the price of gold. And we jumped to notes and bonds, getting all the focus, rightfully so lately. And boy, you talk about getting ahead of itself as we are basically right back to 4%. Let's see where we are right now on that 10 year. 3.992 to be exact 3.992 and that's after being down to about 3.67 i believe talking about 30 plus basis points just like that as we get the 10-year yield approaching four percent we got lower price down seven ticks right now at 112.21 you get the 30-year down 13 ticks right now trading at 122 on the dot that's down from 126.27 almost five full points this week for the 30-year you jump over to the dollar index DXY. So what do we have? We got higher yield. You got dollar strength. You have everything kind of reverberating from what we had happening on Friday. Going to be interesting to see if it holds. We had talked about yesterday the S and P's. We'll get over those jobless claims in a moment. But boy, if it happens again, that's all I'll say. Because boy, I was on the program yesterday. Things seemed like they were just perfectly fine. All right. Even when I did Steve Rhodes' program at 11 o'clock, that took us till 12. Everything was still pretty rosy. The slide began during that program. We'll zoom in on the day yesterday. And we were trading at 53.51. Yeah, when I started that program for Steve at 11, by the time I got off the air, we were at about 53.20. And by just after the close, we were 100 points lower. 100 points again. Now, I bring that up because... Let me back out and put it on a 15 minute. We have quite a trading range over, you know, a two, three day basis right now. Yesterday, I was talking about the fact that we went up 100 points, down 100 points and back up 100 points. And then what did we do? And then we went down, folks, 180 points. Did you hear that? 180 points. Because what I was remarking on was how high the market was from where we were on Monday's low. The S&Ps were approaching about 4.6%. I think the NASDAQ was approaching 6 to 7% off of the low that we had Friday night into Monday morning. All of this just illustrating that we have volatility back. And it's not going away anytime soon because yesterday's rip lower of 180 points, folks, today... We're now, what, 100 points off of the lows that we had at about 7.30 last night. Remarkable moves in the S&P. So get used to it in both directions because it's, uh, it's going to be with us for a little bit of time. All right, we jump over to the data from 8.30. Initial jobless claims. Yes, you come in a little light, and there is some tantalizing way to surmise that, as in they put it, declined by the most in nearly a year. Initial jobless claims declined by the most in nearly a year. I guess that's one way to put it. We decreased by 17,000 to 233,000. The expectation was for 240,000. Continuing claims come in right on the dot. Look at those numbers. 
not a startling number in terms of what was expected. The market was very worried, or at least was pricing, for the risk factor that things were going to deteriorate quickly. And again, this is one of those data points that lines up that says, hey, the Fed doesn't need to come in and cut 75 basis points emergency. They don't need to cut 50 emergency. They don't even need to cut 50 in September. Everyone's getting a little bit over their skis right now. We need to chill out. I'm just giving those cases because we're going to find out. And it's a rocky one in terms of where we come because the lag takes time. And we have the unemployment. You can't deny the unemployment rate, folks. Those are real people. Um, I think you're seeing it with savings deteriorated. You're seeing it with credit card balances rise. You're seeing it with the way people have been dealing with higher prices in the grocery stores for three, four years that are now a compounded, what, 25 easy, 25, 30, 40 percent sometimes higher than you're used to paying. All that stuff is going to add up. What is going to be interesting is that when the Fed begins to cut, how is that going to factor into housing prices? And that is going to free up a lot of equity that people have in their homes that they have not been able to access for some time. And maybe that's just enough impetus to make sure when they come with those 25, 50, right? Mortgage rates were back down to almost 6.5%. You get a mortgage rate back down to 5.5%, which is very realistic if they bring the cuts, four to six of them. We'll see what happens. But not a startling number. And the market reacts with joy. Um, again, all we are is right back to almost where you were towards the end of the session on Tuesday. Okay, expect another day of volatility. Seems like that's what's coming down the line for some time. We jump around to some of the magnificent Sam and Amazon shares. They are higher by about $3 this morning, trading higher to one sixty five thirty nine for Amazon, the big dog Apple. Apple shares catch a pop on that news as well, up to 212 right now from 209.82. We jump around to Google shares. Google up about three dollars. We'll call it two dollars, up to 163 from 160.75 for Google shares. Microsoft shares this morning they're up by almost five dollars. We jump over to Tesla. Tesla, 194.25. You're up by almost three dollars as well, and we jumped to Nvidia, keeping our eye. Nvidia trades below 100 yesterday. We were at 110. I mean, this one's remarkable. Is it 25 billion shares? I think they have outstanding. I don't remember this one. Yeah, 24.6. So we always call it 25. 25 billion shares outstanding. And they trade from 108.80 down to an overnight low of 97. More than $250 billion in market cap in that equity in a simple day of a pullback. And this morning, we're going to be up by about $2, so they're adding almost $50 billion in market cap. Pretty remarkable. We check in on some of those other chip stocks. Intel shares, watch out for Intel, man. Up about 10 pennies. We got AMD shares up about $3. All right, we check in on the dollar yen. So what do we got? When we have dollar strength, you're going to have a little bit of the pullback in the, in the yen. And yeah, you're just settling right now at 147. You dive down to 142. And the next article I was going to talk about, we'll finish this up coming up after the break. So JP Morgan, we're 75% of the way there. Three quarters of the global carry trades are now unwound. Returns have fallen around 10% since May. The clock is ticking for the G10 carry trade is how they put it. But 75%, we'll talk about this. The spot component of the global carry basket would suggest that 75% of those trades have been removed. The carry strategy, you borrow at low rates to fund the purchase and higher yielding assets elsewhere. And yeah, that's the one that sent things reverberating. We'll finish it up on the back of this break, folks. We're coming back. We get the S&Ps in positive territory. We'll be right back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. With updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers, whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got markets continuing to climb with the S&Ps now up 55 points. That's more than 1%, trading at 52.82. Now, remember, all I'll say is we were on the air yesterday, and we had the market trading easily at 53.40 at the highs of Tuesday, and then the market sells off again, 180 points. So just keep your fingers quick in this market, man, because we're going to have volatility everywhere. Um, this should not be a game-changing number in terms of the initial jobless claims. Yes, we come in at a very healthy 233,000, okay? That is not indicative of an economy that's the wheels are falling off. It is not. But just remember how wild this data gets, okay? And one pause of decent data, we'll see where we go from there. Um, but I believe the Fed is going to start cutting. It's just anyone's question of how fast they go, how quickly they go. And, um, and how far they go with those cuts. And they're going to have some time. And I think they want to give themselves some time here because they definitely have some room to stimulate the economy. All right. Austin Goolsby coming out a couple of days ago saying, don't worry, the Fed will come in and save everybody to surmise. Not exactly how it works, but there is a lot of stimulus that they can bring if they need to when they start out at a yield of 5.5 percent. Can you imagine what would happen to the housing market if we ever went back down to 3.75% mortgages? I'm not saying we're going there, okay? But think about the stimulus this Fed actually has, and we're still sitting on a number where initial claims are 233000 That's going to give the Fed a little bit of pause to potentially not um, throw in the emergency flag just yet, especially when you get data like this, okay? Yes, you can make the case it's time to cut. But no, you can't make the case it's an emergency when you have unemployment at 4.3% and you have initial jobless claims at a pretty healthy 233,000. Unemployment rate of 4.3 might be where we need to be. Yes, we've saw some, quite a rise from the threes, 
okay, and that's real people looking for jobs that are unemployed. But we also saw where the inflation number was when he had, when we had an unemployment number at 3.7 percent, right? We saw where inflation was. That that's that was too hot. So nonetheless, we get back to the carry trade just to talk about it for another moment here. So J.P. Morgan talking about three percent, uh, three. 75 percent, three quarters, I'll get there, of that carry trade has been unwound. And it is interesting, though, when they get into how much of the profits got wiped out almost instantly by the type of move they had. OK. Where are we here? Let me get it. No. Nope. They wiped out all the profits going back maybe to the beginning of 22. Here we go. Uh, so they call them the group 10 returns in the group 10 which are emerging market and global carry trade baskets tracked by the bank, this is J.P. Morgan, have fallen about 10% since May. The moves have wiped out the year-to-date returns and significantly cut into profits accumulated since the end of 2022. That's almost two years of profits, just like that. The spot component of the global carry basket would suggest that 75% of those trades have been removed. The clock is ticking for the rest of them. And what they talk about here is that there's not enough reward out there anymore. We'll see if that changes, right? We talked about when Japan said they're going to stay with the easing, that already people were making new trades, okay? The global tra carry trade is not offering an attractive risk reward, they emphasize, okay? Number one, the yield on the basket has plummeted since the highs of 2023 and is not a sufficient compensation for holding emerging market high betas. So what do you have? Well, you have something like the U.S. 10-year that just went to 3.67% from approaching 5%, right? Well, if you're borrowing yen to buy a yield of 5%, you have a lot more cushion for your profits than if you're borrowing yen to get 3.7%. Now we're back to almost 4% just like that. But you see the destruction at the same time, you have what? You have the yen strengthening and you're gonna have to pay back stronger yen with a weaker dollar and that's where you really end up getting destroyed with your profit. So nonetheless, that, that trade looks to be unwound to a certain degree, but that's it says it's got 25% left. And I imagine that that is going to continue to unwind, especially if Japan holds to their guns, but I don't know if they will. And we finish it up with, if you're looking for a bargain in Japan, yeah, it might make sense to look into some of Buffett's positions because he's got, what, $267 billion in cash. And if he liked these stocks at X price, he might like them even more at X price price minus a discount from that sell-off. They have a large stake in five Japanese trading houses. They've all fallen sharply from the route. He saw $6.7 billion wiped out in value of those holdings. That number's been cut a bit, now to 550 billion yen from 980 billion yen. And that was as of the close Wednesday. So he holds 8.2% of, and I'm gonna, even though I took Japanese in high school, Went on an amazing trip. Yeah, it, it, the Japanese culture is amazing, folks. I was so fortunate. The summer between my sophomore and junior year, if you've never heard me talk about it, I was fortunate to go on an exchange trip over there. Stayed with the Japanese host family for about three weeks. I was like 16 years old. It was amazing to think about. Um, they gave me a bedroom. I slept on the floor on a mat, as all families do, pretty much. Um, very comfortable. The family was so kind. Took great care of me. Uh, and I took Japanese in high school, and I was fortunate. And if you don't stay with something, folks, you forget it. And I wish I had stayed with it a little bit longer, didn't take it in college, and then lost it. Um, but nonetheless, even pronouncing something like this um, gets me these days. Marubeni Corp, it Itochu Corporation, Sumitomo Corporation, Mitsui Corporation, and Mitsubishi Corporation. Yeah, but I'm going to take a look at those because uh, we'll see. You know, Buffett, if, you, if you're always keeping your stops in place, you can't go wrong with at least watching something of what he's doing. Now, being late to the party and missing the move, sometimes that's a big problem. But, yeah, you saw that Japan, they're going to reverberate to that. That central bank is um, beholden to the markets to a certain degree. And look at the look at the P.E. ratios you're dealing with here. 7.5, 9.1. Not bad. That's around level seen in April to June of last year when Buffett raised his holdings. So there's a chance 
He needs to put all that money to work that he just took out of Apple. And maybe he's seen a little bit of a rotation over there in Japan. And we pull up the overnight markets right now. You got Asia. Is, let's see, what do we got? Nikkei is down about 7 tenths percent. The Hang Seng is basically flat over in Europe right now. You got negative prices. The DAX is down about one tenth percent. FTSE down about six tenths percent. And we got our markets rocking up 52 points. Checking out Comcast. You know, I find myself watching a lot of the Olympics. Man, some great coverage. Some of those sprinters, right? I'm watching some of those sprinters. I was watching the hurdles last night, man. Um, and I watch it all on Peacock, which is pretty interesting. Comcast. Comcast, though. Be careful on this one. We'll talk a little bit more about that. We'll talk some streamers. We're going to talk Warner Brothers as well. We'll be right back. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open with the S&Ps up 54 points right now. But boy, when you look at things on a daily, right, it has been quite a run from the highs. Yes, we got a green bar in here. But as we know, just like I talked about yesterday, man, the afternoons have been rough on this market. We'll see if we can survive an afternoon in positive territory but without a sell-off. And I keep bringing it back. 180 points. Yeah, 180 points yesterday from where we were 
when I got off the air, okay, at 10 in the morning, we were at 5360, folks. By the time you were getting ready for dinner, we were at 5180. Remarkable. So be nimble in these markets, if I can say anything else. And I know that's super general, okay? But just don't get lulled into thinking one data point like this can save us or one data point can, can crush us. It's going to be the totality, and this is going to take some time. This is going to persist for a period of time. How long? We will find out. But we're going to have to see when the Fed begins to cut, okay, going a little bit big picture. That's going to take some time as well, right? How far are we? We're, when do they begin cutting? Uh, excuse me, hiking. We're, we're years after was it March 2022? I think right. We're somewhere like 28 months after they began cutting. Excuse me. I got to after they began hiking. Two and a half years they began hiking. They're finally at the point that they're saying that they're ready to cut because they're now more worried about the economy than they are inflation. Two and a half years. You're gonna see when we begin cutting. They're going to say, where are we? How long is it going to take? When are we going to actually become afraid of inflation again versus being afraid that unemployment continues to rise? Because if we start hitting 4.6, 5%, oh, there's going to be some problems, man. Those numbers are going to get really high really quick if this trend continues. All of that is going to have to play out, and it is going to take some time, and we're going to have some volatility. I'm not sure we're going to have 180-point days in both directions, left and right. That is quite a move in the S&Ps, but nonetheless, I mean, the NASDAQ, man, NASDAQ, what was that move? 800 points almost? Yeah, 18.5 down to 17.7. Yeah, 800 points. Whew, wild. What was that? Yeah, almost 5%, 4 to 5% in the NASDAQ. Just remarkable. All right, so... Man, you got to love the Olympics as a competitor, right? Just some awesome races out there. I've been watching some of those sprinting races. You have the guy who was at Hoker, the 1,500-meter. Um, you see that one where he came back? And then there was a gentleman yesterday. Was it the – I should get the names. Man, there were just awesome comebacks in the final stages of some of those sprints races. So I've been enjoying Comcast. I talked about signed up for Peacock for like $30 around the Kentucky Derby when NBC had the Kentucky Derby. And in my head, I said, okay, this isn't bad. You sign up for 30 bucks. It comes with ads, of course. But I'm going to get the Kentucky Derby, which I wanted to watch that day. I'm going to get the Olympics, which are coming up, which was great. I'm going to get some movies on Comcast that I wanted to watch any anyway. And then I'm going to get the NFL coming for NFL on NBC coming down the line, right, with whatever else is on Peacock in the meantime. I said, okay, that's worth $30 for a year. It's going to be interesting when these people come up for renewal in a year. Right. Because I find myself thinking, man, I got quite a bargain here, but I don't know if I'm going to be willing to pay $80 a year to get served by ads by Peacock after the Olympics is over, etc. Just something to consider, man. They're going to have, they, you know, all these streaming companies. It is a battle, uh, at least for everybody to stay on in perpetuity. I imagine we're going to have the ones where we start switching on and off dramatically. But nonetheless, now that's a perfect segue to Warner Brothers Discovery. So check this one out, man. They're out with their earnings. They're down by 8%. You take a look at the longer term frame, time frame. Uh, this spike up, always remember, that's the Bill Huang saga, okay? That price, not exactly indicative of a fair market. But even if you take that acceleration out of things and just pretend like this equity would have chopped around between 20 and 30, and maybe it wouldn't have, right? But just pretend it would have chopped around between 20 and 30 that year if Bill Huang wasn't manipulating the market, right? Bidding this thing up to 78 bucks before it collapsed back down to $20 by the end of the year, okay? Pretty remarkable that you just continue lower for this, and we're making new lows now today. We drive down to 673. We're at 710. You were just trading at $9 uh, 10 days ago. When is this? Not even. What's today? Today's August 8th, July 31st. Yeah, nine days ago. You were trading up there at almost $9. 10 days ago, you were at 894. We're trading at 707. That's a $2 hit on a $9 stock, right? 20 plus percent over that time. You're down by 8.3 today. And you get into it, okay? How about an impairment charge that reflects every dollar of revenue they took in the entire quarter, right? Check this out. $9.1 billion write down on its TV networks is what really tanks them here, okay? But a $9.1 billion write down, they only took in 9.7 for the entire quarter. 
and they had to write down 9.1 billion in terms of what the networks are worth that they own because they're not even close to what they thought they were just a couple years ago okay and those networks have to do with the likes of getting some of the numbers here I mean what do they have they have TNT they have the numbers somewhere in here I was reading it come on yeah here we go uh, TBS, TNT, Discovery, TLC, okay? That's a problem. I mean, TNT just lost the NBA to Amazon. All of those networks are no longer worth nothing compared to what they thought they were, okay? Revenue at those TV networks down 8% to $5.27 billion during the quarter with both distribution and ra advertising revenue down in that segment. Okay. Now they added 3.6 million subscribers during the quarter, bringing the total number to 103 million. It's nothing to shake at, man. That is quite a number, right? What was Disney at? 118 million, I think, yesterday was their number. As Disney grew 1%, they're adding 3.6 million. They're at 103.3. International expansion, lifting subscriber growth. Same with Disney there, as well as an increased ad spending on streaming. Same as well. All right. Direct to consumer streaming revenue. Decreased 5%, though, to $2.57 billion, driven by content revenue, dropping 70% due to a lower volume of third-party licensing deals. So they have less revenue, but they have less of the content revenue for their licensing deals is how that accumulates out there. Not on where they're actually taking money in for the streaming where they're actually growing the numbers, it looks to be, okay? Yeah, because advertising revenue for streaming, up 99%. So that's where it's all going, man. You know, no matter how you break down these companies, make sure you're looking at the advertising numbers, and that's why Netflix is going to stop telling your subscribers. They're ahead of it. Stay on it. Make sure you're looking at the advertising numbers here. And, you know, I'm not going to tell you to go out and buy Warner Brothers Discovery when you're down 9%, this thing just won't stop falling. But I will say that, and uh, man, Kevin Hinks used to say this all the time, right? At, at a certain price of any equity, I'd be a buyer. At a certain price of any equity, I'd be a seller, right? As in, equities can be oversold or overbought no matter how bad or how good they are, okay? You're now at a company valued at 17.2 billion dollars. They just took a write down of 9.1 billion on their TV networks and at 17 billion okay there's value to what they control to a certain degree longer term at a certain number I don't know 17 is the number maybe 14 is the number right where is that number I'm not sure but I've begun taking a look because there's nothing like HBO Max man they're gonna be a competitor okay they're gonna team up and have some bundles with the ESPN etc but today they're paying the price down by 9.2 percent stay tuned folks we'll come back we'll talk some other equities take charge of your financial future TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school. 
taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds for both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have markets in positive territory. Let's jump through some of the movers this morning. Under Armour. Up 15.3% on their numbers, and there's some tough numbers. So they're talking about something on the earnings call. As Under Armour spikes to almost eight dollars, we're trading the 744. That's a buck higher, up 15%. You see the volatility over the last year, up to almost ten dollars to kick off the year, up to a high of 905 back there in February, and then things really cascaded. You got a gap away in March, and you've been chopping around between about 650 and seven. The one thing they did announce, maybe the market is liking to a certain degree is that they have settled a case that had to do with basically defrauding shareholders. Always nice to take a little bit of an unknown off the table. And that number is, sorry, sliding through. It was 400-something million, I think, was the number that they paid. Let's see. Oh, come on. All right, I'll pull it up. Maybe it was in the headline I saw it. Yeah, 434 million. So after settling a securities lawsuit from 2017. Do you remember when that was coming? I remember when that was coming, man. Didn't that CEO step down like a couple weeks before that was announced? Uh, nonetheless, sales fall after the retailer cuts discounts and promotions in a bid to be more premium. As somebody that loves sneakers, man, Under Armour is kind of in that wheelhouse. They got a lot of good competition, and I put them in the secondary category right now. And that's that's probably their own doing from just like they know they put themselves into a sales category too often. The sales and the sneakers just don't have the same competition when you're talking about something like a Nike, even a New Balance I love. And they're trying to change that. But, boy, they got a problem, man. You look at revenue. OK, revenue beats slightly. OK, earnings per share one cent versus a loss of eight was expected. So they do beat. All right. But here's what I found interesting here. In the three months ended June, they lost three hundred and five million. OK. Compared with a profit, excluding one-time expenses, it reported a profit of $4 million. So they have one-time expenses as they're trying to turn this company around. They're basically breaking even right now. But these one-time expenses are mammoth compared to what they're taking in. They're, they're taking in a total of less than $1.2 billion. And 25% of what they're taking in is going to one-time impairment charges to try and turn this around. And again, it's a turnaround story. That means that you're risking more. Your rewards will be returned if it pays off, but be careful. There is a lot of risk, and here it is. Yeah, in late June, they agreed to settle a years-old securities lawsuit, $434 million, about three weeks before the trial was slated to begin. They were accused of defrauding shareholders about its revenue growth and a bid to meet forecasts. Okay, they were accused of fixing their books, man. That's what, that's what it was. So they settle it for $434 million, and, and you know, this is not a company – that is like Apple. Okay, that is a substantial sum of money for a company that's only taken in a billion dollars every 90 days, and they got to sell it for 434 million. But nonetheless, that's in the rearview mirror. They expect to swing to a loss in fiscal 2025. 
per share of 53 to 56 cents and adjusted earnings per share between 19 and 22. So they got a turnaround. It's on its way, but I'd be careful of this one, man, because that's a lot of money when you're only taking in a billion dollars a year. And just speaking as somebody who likes those crisp athletic shoes occasionally, even running shoes, Brooks has great shoes too. If you're looking for running shoes, folks, and I'm no runner runner, I do like going for a little light jog, get a little bit of a sweat. Uh, maybe it's just a walk. Brooks has some outstanding running shoes, and it's amazing to see how Nike has let so many other competitors in their wheelhouse. But then you talk about an Under Armour that's trying to compete, and I know they have a lot more than shoes, okay? Um, of course they do. But I happen to have a pair of their shoes, and I'm just not really a fan of it. Yeah, which is interesting when you put it in that context. All right, we jump around some of the others. Eli Lilly flying higher on their numbers today. Up by 10%. That's a $77 spike for Eli Lilly. We jump over to their numbers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Blows past estimates, hikes guidance as their drugs, Zepound and Manjaro, Man, Manjaro, right? Sales soar is how they put it. Yeah. Um, it's full year revenue outlook. They raised it by $3 billion. They raised it by $3 billion. I just went over how Under Armour's only taken in a billion every 90 days. They're raising how much they're taking in by $750 million every 90 days to reach that $3 billion. As sales of those blockbuster diabetes drug Manjaro and weight loss drug Zepound, yeah, full-year adjusted earnings, 16 to 1660 up from a guidance of 1350 to 14 yeah. Revenue for the year, 45.4 to 46.6, an increase of $3 billion at both ends of the range. That is quite a number, man. Whew. And look at the run this thing's already been on, right? From 313, a one-way sh shot to 966, and they come out and, you know, Look at this thing, man. Whew. From 100 coming into COVID. Is that coming into COVID? That is. Come into COVID at about 100, you're at 966. And it is remarkable, folks. Remember that when I say coming into COVID, that's five years ago. Five years ago. And I just say it as in coming in late 2019, right before the volatility of early 2020 hits, of course. And you can't even see the blips on these charts anymore. The market is so far from where we were then. Pretty remarkable. You jump over to restaurant brands. They're higher as well. Now, they got Burger King. They got Tim Hortons, but Tim Hortons is what's driving them higher, it seems to be, in some of the numbers. Restaurant brands, their symbol is QSR. You're up by 1% right now. That's a 78-cent pop to 71.30. We jump over to their numbers. And the headline there, at least they put it, um, tops revenue fueled by Tim Hortons. Now, that's a huge Canadian company, I believe. I believe they're like the Starbucks of Canada. I know Starbucks has stores in Canada, of course. But, yeah, fueled by better-than-expected sales at Tim Hortons. Let's see, so earnings, they slightly miss. Revenue, they beat, barely. Second quarter income, $399 million, up from 351 Net sales rose 17% to $2.08 billion. Boosted by recent acquisitions of Burger King restaurants in the U.S., the company's same-store sales up 1.9%, decent number. Out of the four chains, Tim Hortons performed the best. Same store sales growth of 4.6. Popeyes, they got up 0.5%. Both Burger King and Firehouse Subs were a decline. Yeah, you saw it with McDonald's, right? They're trying to bring back the $5 value meal. Let's check out McDonald's. Hey, McDonald's is back within that channel line, man. Check that out, right? I've been talking about this. You want the definition of a well-defined channel, man? Check out McDonald's on a monthly basis. I've been bringing this one up for a while. All you got to do is take out that little tail of two months around COVID, and it is very reasonable to say that that was in a well-defined channel line. You take COVID out of it, and we're back within that channel line right now. And look how many times we've bounced off the bottom or thereabouts. Look at how many times, going back years, from the beginning of Basically, the end of 2015, you start that channel at $92, and yeah, we're back within that channel. We put it on a weekly, so look where we are. So keep your eye on McDonald's, man. Would they ever come back with $5 value meals for real food? And when I say real food, I'm talking about more than, you know, 
a fry and a wrap with one chicken finger in there. You have to, you know, put together some type of a meal with a quarter pounder or a chicken sandwich with fries and a drink for five dollars, man. So much for five dollar foot footlongs, right? All right, one more segment, folks. We'll take a look at some other equities. We'll take a look at the markets. S and P's up thirty seven. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets pretty much where we kick things off. S&P's up by 50. NASDAQ 100, you're up by 172. The Dow now up more than 1%, up 429 points. The Russell up by 1.1% as well. We check in on some of the commodities as we wrap up the program. Gold up $19, above 24.50 yet again. And you got notes and bonds with a little bit of lower price and higher yield. And where are we sitting? Probably just under 4% right now, right? Where are we sitting? 3.996. So we probably hit four at some of that at about 920 this morning. We probably hit four when we were about four ticks lower. So, yeah, we were. And I see the headlines. Treasury yields jump back above 4%, I guess, on the jobless claims number. But, you know, jobless claims number, folks, don't get too distracted from that one. That is a far off number in terms of where the economic numbers rank in terms of importance going down the line. Now, we jump to Boeing. Could it get any worse for Boeing? This story, I mean, these astronauts, man, say some prayers, keep them in your thoughts because, boy, it's it's a it's a movie straight out of Hollywood in terms of two astronauts 
Uh, we might have to keep them in space until 2025 and send a different ship from who? Elon Musk. He's going to save them potentially with SpaceX. Yeah, yeah, NASA. Astronauts could be stranded in space till 2025 because Boeing's vehicle can't get it done. I'm surmising here, okay? And I was reading a few articles in this last night. But yeah, it seems like they may have to send, and I guess this article doesn't do it. Maybe this one does it. Let me see. Yeah, but they may have to. There it is. Boeing Starliner. Okay. They've been in space for 60 days. There's no end in sight. Obviously, I guess they prepare for this. But keep those astronauts in your thoughts, man. They've been in space for 63 days. That's seven weeks longer than they initially expected. And they may be stuck there until next year. Okay. Um, yeah. As that Boeing Starliner has some problems. And you may have the SpaceX vehicle. Yeah. You know, Boeing or SpaceX officials were available for comment. You got to know that Elon's eating this one up, man. Rightfully so. I mean, what if, what if, what if SpaceX wasn't around and those astronauts had to rely on Boeing and they can't get it done? Boeing, a little bit of a pop today, but it's been quite a slide from 191 recently to 166. Markets in positive territory. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's out today, but we got our man Steve Rhodes. He's back in the saddle coming up live at 11. Fast market at 12. Larry Pezzavento, Tom O'Brien, my dad, back at 3 today. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you in a